Lady Plays here, and today we're continuing Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishment. So let's just jump right in after it loads. <laughs> Did you hear that? There's someone there. I'm gonna collar him. I'll be right behind you. Police! Hold it right there! I don't walk very fast. All right, my fine fellow. Who are you and what are you doing here? You're detectives, I suppose. Uh, you imagine that I'm connected with the death of Captain Carey. I assure you I'm innocent. Mm -hmm. Innocent? And what are you doing in his cabin? Shall I tell you? You came to retrieve what you had lost after killing Peter Carey. But we were here, waiting for you. What is your name? John Hopley Nelligan, but I... I didn't... Do you deny that you came here yesterday? No, but... but I... yes, it, it's just that I couldn't... I'm tired of this. Off we go to the yard. Tomorrow, I'll see that you're put in front of the judge. Okay. What? But you can't! I'm not... it's a terrible mistake! Enough! You can explain all of that to the judge. You're coming with me to the yard. But... In light of recent events, it seems evident that your coming here was unnecessary. All the same, I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Holmes. You are welcome, Inspector. But please don't be too hard on our young fellow. I would like to question him tomorrow morning. I got hers. Hmm. So what's here? Some of the evidence can be used in the investigation and will be marked with specific icons. Interesting. Let's move on. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Can I help you? Good morning, Constable. I would like to speak to the fellow who was arrested at Woodman's Lee last night. Ah, the young man. He's waiting in the interrogation room. You can go straight through. His belongings are held in the evidence room. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna go to the evidence room first. This is stuff, yeah. These are the suspect's belongings. The notebook that we found on Peter Carey's cabin floor. Evidence required. A pocket knife. It was used to force the door of Peter Carey's cabin. A handkerchief with the initials J H N. Hmm. 
and partner, 1883. From R. Dawson. To my friend and partner, 1883. Friend Dawson. I've seen this name before. Perhaps my archive holds the answer. Okay. I really hope that, uh. I'm noticing my connect is acting really strange. So let me... Okay. That's the morgue. Do I need to go to the morgue? Spectreless drone. Should I really be in here? I guess there's really nothing for me in here. And I can't go through there. I guess I'm supposed to go in here. Does this notebook belong to you? Yes. But where did you find it? I did not know. I, I, I thought I'd lost it at the hotel. Mm -hmm. What do these abbreviations mean? Oh, no. I beg you, I can't. If I told you, it would only make things worse. But I will find out eventually, Mr. Nelligan. It's his name. Like, seriously? The sea knife was found near Carrie's body. Tell me, Mr. Nelligan, did Mr. Carey try to defend himself or to attack you with it? I don't know. I didn't kill anyone. Shabby hat. Expensive fabric. Oh, button. Elaborate button. Icky hands, scars, calluses. Short sleeves. Thin neck. I don't know what that means. It has to do with anything. <laughs> the police seized this valuable ring from you. Whose is it? I didn't steal it from anyone. It has always belonged to me. The ring's date of engraving is many years ago. You would have been a child then, hardly in any position to receive such an item from a partner. So, Mr. Nelligan, who is the true owner of the ring? The ring is mine. Um. 
No, Mr. Nelligan. I believe that the ring had belonged to your father. Mm -hmm. oh, but, but, but how do you know? The jacket you are wearing is this made is of an expensive Holmes. fabric that only a man of exceptional wealth could afford. You do not seem to me to be a rich man, Mr. Nelligan. Furthermore, the garment is ill-fitting. It is quite clear that it belonged to someone else. Most probably, your father. Mm -hmm. With your father gone and taking with him the family's wealth, as a little boy you had to find yourself a manual job, and it was most probably cleaning fish. You cut your hands often while working. I can tell from the scars. I'm speechless, Mr. Holmes. It, it all happened exactly as you say. Uh, because he's Sherlock Holmes. Well, I will see you soon, young man. Please let me go. I am innocent. <sighs> Notebook with the blood stain on it. It's covered. The key that it was dropped in. What? Retrieving the notebook. The break-in attempts were made in order to recover the notebook. It had been lying in a pool of the victim's blood. This proves the guilt of the person who made these attempts. Okay. So why don't we go back to the evidence locker? And see about looking at that notebook again. Evidence locker. Or evidence room, as they call it. These are the suspect's belongings. These abbreviations mean something. But what? Let me ask the kids something. I wonder if I can ask the kids something. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. Okay, maybe not. Okay. So do I go Locked. to Lestras? I got that ring. A new person profile, I think. Yeah. Okay, so now what do I do? Mr. Holmes? Do I leave? Oh, I wonder if I can go to the morgue. anything useful here. Okay, clearly nothing useful. Hmm. I guess I leave, right? I just... I leave? Maybe? These are the suspect's belongings. Examine that. These abbreviations mean something, but what? I don't know. I don't know. Let me talk to this police dude. At your service, Mr. Holmes. Okay, maybe not. Let's 
go back to the crime scene. We'll see what happens. I get attempts are made in order to grab the notebook that hang in a pool of the victim's blood. This proves the guilt of the person who made the attempt. Hmm. These boots don't match the footprints. So they're not Peter, whatever. Figure that one out. They haven't removed the body yet, like. I can talk to her. Let's see what happens. Your husband's private papers. Do you know where they are? There was a small tin box, barely larger than a book. He kept his papers there. It should be somewhere in his cabin. Uh, they're not. Is this your husband's tobacco pouch? I'm not sure. It might be. But he hadn't smoked in a very long time. Thank you, madam. Alright, so his personal paperwork was inside the cabin, which is the, probably where the box was at. But... Now I gotta make that... This place is not covered with dust, like the rest of the shelf. Mm -hmm. An object was taken from here. It was larger than a book, a box, or a small chest, perhaps. I don't know what this is. So it was stolen. We get that part. Do I go back to Baker's, whatever? Baker Street? Let's go to Scotland Yard again. This is where things start to get freaking frustrating because I don't know what I'm exactly supposed to be doing. <sighs> Touch anything other than that? These are the suspect's belongings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so can I talk to him again? Can I accuse him of theft? What 
am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. Alright, so I guess we're gonna go to Baker Street then. See what happens when we go there. That doesn't work for anything. What does no gardener have to do with anything? See what happens. Good gracious, you caught someone. At least now you have a suspect. Brave Toby, the best nose in the British Empire. My analysis table. It is useful for my work. Oh yeah. Forgot about this. A uh, heavy gold ring with the hard dust. 1883. That is not the one I need. Shut up. Dawson and Nelgen are bankrupt. Uh, let's do it. Dawson and Nelgen. Investment fund bankrupt. Elegant missing. The Dawson and Elegant investigate investment fund, a regional banking institution based in Cornwall, has declared bankruptcy as a result of heavy losses in its loan portfolio and has accordingly been assigned for liquidation. It was the 23rd largest bank in Britain and its bankruptcy was the second largest on record. The liquidation of company is a pure catastroph catastrophe for many Cornwall families. Joshua Nelligan, one of the bankers, has since mysteriously disappeared. He was last seen abroad aboard his yacht preparing for departure to Norway. Nelligan is wanted both by the police and his creditors. Here it is. Huh. Now I begin to understand that young man's story, but I am still unclear as to what connects him with the murder. It is time to ask him. All right. Let's go ask him real quick before we end this episode. He's at Scotland Yard. Don't ask me what kind of... what that was. <laughs> See about asking that kid. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. See what happens. I have.
have heard the story of Dawson and Nelligan, the West Country bankers. Yes, Joshua Nelligan was my father. I am aware that it had a bad ending. When the bank failed, it ruined half the families of Cornwall, whereupon Joshua Nelligan disappeared. My father was under extraordinary pressure. Dawson had retired. I was only ten years of age at the time, but it was still old enough to feel the shame that befell our family. My father was convinced that he could pay off all his debts if the creditors gave him time. He set sail for Hammerfest in Norway in his small yacht just a few days before an arrest warrant was issued. He left my mother a list of the securities he was taking. No word was ever heard from him again. We believe that his vessel went down, taking with it everyone and everything on board. <laughs> Thank you for the story, Mr. Nelligan. At last, we are making some progress. Interesting. Joshua Nelligan and Peter Carey were both at sea in Norway. There is definitely some connection between Peter Carey and Joshua Nelligan's disappearance. Investigate. No, I guess it's not to be. Sh ship's log for the year might be some light. Go back to this wood place. See what uh what the log books have to say. Oh. And I'm getting tired. Once we see what the log books have to say, I think things will get like all the puzzle pieces will come into place. I mean that I, I'm assuming because it's a crime puzzle game thing. I still can't believe they haven't taken the bodies out of the cabin yet. Eighteen eighty three. That's the one I need. Mm -hmm. This is the crew list of the sea unicorn. This is the crew oh. list of the sea unicorn. I'm not going to say all the words, but Peter Carey's there. Bunch of sailors. Log notes for June. Nothing unusual. Log notes for July. Nothing special. Log notes for August. These pages have been torn away. Oh, okay. Canadian Pacific Railway, CPR, a torn piece from a bond certificate. I have seen this abbreviation somewhere very recently. There are three ways of discovering what happened in August of 1883 aboard the Sea Unicorn. The first two of these will require speaking with a dead man. The last would be to locate vital witnesses, the sailors involved in this whale hunt campaign. <laughs> This is so, 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 so interesting. Oh my gosh. Find the crew. Well, how do you expect me to find? Wiggins might help find the crew of the sea unicorn. He could be somewhere at Baker Street. Alright guys, I'm calling this episode here. So with y'all, pinkies up. Hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, keep it classy. See ya.